Good morning. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Kirsten Stuckey. I'm a senior here at Bowling Green State University. And last year, I had one of the most monumental breakdowns in my entire college career. Picture this. You're sitting at your desk in your room, working on final exam projects, and you've had a hard year. 18 credit hours, three jobs, several student organizations, and not to mention, your academic program tasks you with one of the most important jobs that there is. Developing young, impressionable minds with knowledge and information, also known as teaching. Senior year is a big year for any teaching major, and that stress has been looming over your head since you started the program. All of a sudden, you start to feel this nauseating feeling bubbling up inside. All of the stress of everything is getting to you, so you get up and you lay out on the floor and breathe. That was me, junior year, last week of school, in the spring of 2022. I felt like my entire life was crumbling to pieces. My calendar was jam-packed. I had more commitments and requirements than I could keep track of, and not to mention, my personal well-being was suffering. In the midst of this chaos, I was struggling to find any semblance of peace or hope because I felt lost and confused. It felt like I had been hit by a train of emotions. So I'm laying there on the floor, contemplating everything I had ever done in my life. And as I got ready to make one of the biggest changes in my college career, I thought to myself, I'm not going to grow if I can't accept change, even if the change makes me uncomfortable. How can I expect anything different when I'm not open to difference in the first place? Now, if you know me, you know I'm someone who plans my life out to the T. Rarely do I leave anything to chance because having control for me looks like having one hand on the steering wheel at all times. Meaning I don't really do change because life should go according to plan, my plan. But if there's anything that I've learned about life, it's that often we are more out of control than we are in control. At that moment, I found peace in my situation. I have found a way to be, more, to be comfortable with all the changes that were happening around me and I managed to soothe myself into a state of comfort and relaxation. This is because I had to remind myself of three very important things at that moment. The first is that failure doesn't make you a failure. It makes you a doer. By putting yourself into a situation with outcomes that are less than favorable, you are allowing yourself the option to make mistakes. You are saying to yourself, it's OK if this doesn't work, because I'm still taking that leap of faith and doing it to begin with. You are allowing yourself the courage to try something new, and, that, and that's a good thing. Often, we associate failure with fear, and that's because we see fear as a bad thing, so we see failure as a bad thing, and that's not true. Fear is a healthy emotion. Fear helps us understand where the thin line is that separates comfort and discomfort. Fear is important, and so is failure. What we have to have the courage to do is know what risks are worth taking. Which risks will open up new worlds of possibility versus the ones that will cause significant damage to our health or state of being? For example, jumping from a 12-story building with no safety gear. You should be afraid, very afraid. Switching to a new job. Have some fear, but let your courage outweigh it. We have to understand that the outcomes that lie on the other side of fear and failure are often the best, not the most comfortable decisions for us. The second thing I learned was that perfection is impossible. I've had this idea of what my perfect life would be like since I was young. I've always told people, I live my life in a fairy tale, and if I work hard enough, my life will look like happily ever after. And yet, no matter how many times life showed me that that was quite literally not a real aspiration, I chased it anyways. Perfection is a man-made concept that we give to ourselves, and we don't realize the pressure that comes with it. And from what we know about pressure, that can turn into a problem very quickly. Imagine you have a pot on the stove with water, and you turn the heat on high. You put the lid on, and you walk away. As the water starts to boil, it will pop higher and higher until it forces its way out and spills over. That's called pressure, and that's what happened to me. For me, understanding that I couldn't have a perfect life, or better yet, a perfect college experience, was a very humbling experience, I'll tell you that much. But perfection should not be the goal. Happiness should be. Now, do I still strive to have what I think is a perfect life? 
Of course, old habits die hard. The main difference is that now, when things don't turn out the way I expect it, I cope a little better. Instead of watching the pot fill with pressure and water, wanting to boil over, I turn the heat down. The last thing I learned was that success is inevitable for me. While things may fall apart around me and situations may seem hopeless, I am not doomed forever. The trajectory of my life is based on a sign that reads, all roads lead to success. Meaning that no matter how many ups and downs I have, despite the twists and turns, eventually success will come. Kirsten, how do you know? How can you be so sure? For me, there is no point in stressing over things that are out of my control because eventually they will happen as they do. All I can control is how I react and what I do with the cards I'm dealt. I remind myself constantly that my best is good enough and my great is unstoppable. I have confidence no matter what space I'm in. I'm determined to get everything I want out of life. I am driven by my passions. I think and therefore I am. You have to be your biggest cheerleader because no one else is going to. And with that, you also have to be your biggest paramedic. Because when life hits you, and eventually it will hit you, you have to be able to pick yourself back up and put you on a road to success. With those things in mind, I found comfort in the chaos that was my life. I picked up the phone, called my mom, and I told her I was changing my major. I made a plan to spend the summer researching options for my career, and I took a deep breath. I let go of my fear of failure diminished my drive for perfection, and refocused my faith on a path to success. We have to be able to find peace in our situations because we are all we can control. I can't tell you exactly what the future holds for me, but I can tell you these two things. Happiness is imperative and change is inevitable. We cannot operate without happiness and we cannot control change. Since both of these things are true, all that's left is to find happiness in those changes, and comfort will follow. Now let me be clear. If you are going through a traumatic experience, cry. If, you are, if things aren't going your way, scream at the top of your lungs. Feel those big emotions. No need to force yourself to be happy. However, when it's all said and done, remember that life is going to happen as it does, and we only control so much of it. So sometimes it is better to just focus on making yourself happy and comfortable in the chaos than finding a solution. Finding comfort where you are is about standing still, taking a deep breath, and saying, I am here. I have come far, and I am going further, but here is where I stand. It's about being OK with the in-between space that we occupy. There is safety and comfort, and we have to find our safety, find our happy, find our in-between space before we can find a way to move forward. Since making these changes, I have found so much happiness in the freedom that I possess. I've been able to zero in on the things that give me joy and spend more energy pursuing those. But if I hadn't been able to accept my failure, to understand the weight of pressure, and to know that success is coming to me regardless, I could only imagine how miserable I might be. So in conclusion, when in doubt, just lay on the floor and breathe. Thank you.